morning, boys and girls. My name is Linda Ott, and this is Elizabeth. My name is Hattie. And we live on a farm in Calhoun County, and we're members of an organization called Farm Bureau, and we want to share a wonderful book with you today, and it's called The Kid Who Changed the World. So let's get ready and jump in and read. The Kid Who Changed the World is by Andy Andrews and it's illustrated by Philip Hurst. I want to tell you a story about the kid who changed the world. His name was Norman Borlaug. Norman lived on a farm in Iowa. He loved to play hide and seek with his little sisters in their father's cornfields. Norman was tall and skinny with hair so light it looked like the silk that sprouted from the ears of corn. Norman was very good at hiding in the cornfields. Norman tiptoed quietly so his sisters couldn't hear him. He crept along until he was just close enough to catch them. Gotcha! The girls giggled and squealed. Now you hide, Norman! Norman ran to hide in the field, careful not to knock down any corn stalks. Just yesterday, his father reminded him, you know, son, we're blessed to have all this corn. There are many people in the world who do not have enough to eat. What would it be like to be hungry all the time? Norman wondered as he looked at the endless rows of corn. There has to be a way this corn can feed the hungry people, he thought. Right then and there, Norman decided to change the world. Norman learned everything he could about plants. When he was grown, he worked for a man named Mr. Wallace. Mr. Wallace said, Norman, I want you to use what you learned in school to make special seeds. These special seeds will grow into super plants and feed more people than ordinary plants. To make the special seeds, Norman had to go to faraway places and work in the rain and summer heat, but he never gave up. Finally, Norman developed the special seeds that grew into super plants. Norman's special seeds of corn and wheat and rice were sent all over the world, and the super plants fed the hungry people just like Norman dreamed about as a boy. A whole family could eat dinner from one super plant. And guess what? Norman saved more than two billion people from starving. Two billion! It's true. Norman was the kid who changed the world. Or maybe it was a kid named Henry. I want to tell you a story about the kid who changed the world. His name was Henry Wallace. Henry's father was a professor, and one of his students was a young man named George. Henry loved to go with George on expeditions in the countryside. George knew more about plants than anyone Henry had ever known. Henry peered over the edge of the water to inspect a plant growing on the bank. Don't get too close to that water, Henry, George said. Your daddy will have a fit if you get eaten by a hippopotamus. Henry laughed. Hippos don't live in Iowa. I'm just trying to get a better look at this flower. You know, Henry, God gave us plants as a way to learn. We can use that knowledge to help others. It's a very important mission. George, I want that to be my mission. Will you help me? Of course. Remember, Henry, God made you to make a difference, and I believe you will. Henry learned so much about plants that he grew up to be the United States Secretary of Agriculture. Then Henry Wallace became the Vice President of the United States of America. From that important office, Vice President Wallace, but you can still call him Henry, continued his mission to learn how plants could help people. As Vice President, Henry wanted to help people around the world grow more food, so he hired a young man named Norman Borlaug, the same Norman who developed the special seeds that grew into super plants that fed the hungry people. 
So you see, because Henry is the one who came up with the idea of special seeds and hired Norman to make them, it was really Henry who changed the world. Or maybe it was George. I want to tell you about the kid who changed the world. His name was George Washington. Now, before we continue, you must know that he is not George Washington, the president. The United States president, George Washington, lived a long time before the George Washington in this story. George's father died before he was born, and his mother died when he was very young. But the good news is that a nice couple named Moses and Susan Carver adopted George and made him a part of their family. Well, George, what have you got there? Asked his neighbor, Mrs. McLeod, as she plopped down on a tree stump beside the young boy. I'm whittling a crutch for my friend who hurt his ankle. Just look at you, creating that from a big old tree branch. George, you've got a sharp mind and a kind heart. Thank you, ma'am, but it's not much. Won't take me too long. I'll bet your friend will be a mighty grateful for that crutch. You know, George, little things can make a big difference. Everything we do matters. Every action you take, even small things can change the world. Sure enough, George Washington Carver changed the world. He became a teacher and an inventor. For instance, he invented 266 things from the peanut that we still use today. From the sweet potato, George invented 88 things that we still use today. But he did something much more important than that. When George Washington Carver was at Iowa State University, he had a teacher named Professor Wallace. On weekends, George would roam the fields and forest with the professor's six-year-old son, Henry teaching the boy about plants and how many ways they could be used to help people. Now let's see here. Norman made the seeds that grew into plants that fed the world's hungry people. But he couldn't have done it without Henry, who had the idea to make super plants and hired him. But Henry would not have had the idea without George, who spent so much time teaching young Henry about plants. So there you have it. George Washington Carver was the kid who changed the world. Wait, we forgot about his mom, Susan. I want to tell you a story about the kid who changed the world. Her name was Susan. She lived on a farm with her mom and dad way up north. Susan pulled nails out of the old barn wood while her pet rooster, Buzz, watched. Susan, her mother called as she walked toward her in the field. What are you doing? Well, I figured if I got these nails out of this wood, we could reuse it for something like patching the chicken coop or building a playhouse. Thank you, Susan. Those are wonderful ideas. I'm sure Buzz will appreciate a snug home come winter, she said with a smile. He hasn't helped with a single nail, Susan giggled. You know, dear, Every choice you make, good or bad, can make a difference. I'm proud of you for making a good choice today. When Susan grew up, she married a man named Moses Carver, and together with a few workers, they managed a farm. They were very happy, but one night, some men tried to hurt them. Outlaws called Quantrill's raiders rode into the farm. They burned down Susan's and Moses' barn and kidnapped some of the workers. One of the people they kidnapped was a little boy named George. Susan had to do something. She and her husband searched and searched and finally found young George. Moses and Susan even traded their favorite black horse in return for the little boy. That night, beside the fireplace, as Susan rocked that baby, she told George that they would adopt him. Susan also promised to give the boy their name. As the baby drifted off to sleep, Susan whispered, good night, little George Washington Carver. 
So if Susan and Moses hadn't have saved George from the outlaws, George wouldn't have grown up to take Henry on walks in the forest. Then Henry wouldn't have become interested in plants and later hired Norman. Without Henry's idea, Norman wouldn't have developed the special seeds that grew into super plants. And without the super plants, two billion people would have nothing to eat. It's odd, isn't it? Every time something happens, something else happens. That's called the butterfly effect. When a butterfly flaps its wings, it moves tiny pieces of air that move other tiny pieces of air, that move other tiny pieces of air. In fact, on the other side of the world, they might be feeling a big whoosh of wind, all because a butterfly flapped its wings here just a few minutes ago. That means every little thing you do matters. What you did yesterday, what you do today, and what you do tomorrow. God made your life so important that every move you make, every action you take matters. Not only for you or the people around you, everything you do matters for everyone and for all time. When you think about it like that, wow! That means you can be the kid who changes the world. Wasn't that a great book, boys and girls? Thank you so much for listening and paying attention to these people who made a difference. And just remember you, God made you to be special. And if you use those gifts, you too, with his help, can change the world. Okay, boys and girls. We told you earlier that we live on a farm in Calhoun County and we grow cotton and corn. So we wanted to show you the stages of cotton. All right, it starts out as a little plant like this. And then after water and sunshine and a little time, you see this yellow flower. This turns into the yellow flower. Then the yellow flower, after some more time and more sun and more rain, it turns into a pink flower. And then from the pink flower, it turns into a bowl. And then guess what? Once it turns into a bowl, it opens up, and this is what you have. This is the cotton that turns into and makes cotton blankets, or cotton blouses, or cotton t-shirts. Isn't it fascinating what God can do with a seed? That seed moves through these stages to pre produce something that we sleep on, that we use to dry off with, that we use to wear. And we even eat because cotton makes cotton seed oil. So we fry our fish and fry our chicken in it sometimes. So cotton is very important. So next time you see, pick up that cotton shirt of yours, you think about all the stages that it went to to become what it became. And when you kind of think about it, our lives are like that too. You're boys and girls right now, but you're growing and you're changing and just think what you will be when you grow up. There are all kinds of possibilities. So boys and girls, thank you so much for joining us today. We've had a great time sharing a little bit about our lives and about the lives of some people who really changed the world. So thank you, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.